So it is Draftmas Eve, and I'm in Hermosa Beach, LA County. Don't worry, I'm actually gonna be flying back to the Bay Area. I'll be at the 49ers facility in time for the draft yesterday, but amidst all this late night music, look what I stumbled into here in Southern California. Ram's house. They're having their big draft party here, the Rams are. It's gonna be obviously starting tomorrow, going through Friday, but right on the beach, they've got the big stage set up. I'll show you here in just a second. First, I have to show you the 49ers logo. They're one of the opponents for the Rams next year. That's mandatory. But I mean, who would have thought I'd be down in LA for a couple of days before the draft and I'd run into the literal Rams draft party. We'll see the stage here shortly. But anyway, tomorrow, don't be surprised the 49ers go cornerback or secondary for the first time in the first round in the John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan regime. Highest pick in the secondary has been Akella Witherspoon in the third round back in 2017. But Mike Silver pointed out, well, he's, he's been doing a great, great job covering the 49ers this offseason. They're in win-now mode. Win-now mode means that you need to fortify what you can best fortify for the short term. I get it, the offensive line has been the statistically weakest spot of this football team. But at 31, if that's where the 49ers stay, and I think a Brandon Ayuk trade is unlikely despite all of the noise, and it, it's still possible, nobody's saying it's impossible, but unlikely. If you stay at 31, it's gonna be tough to find an instant impact offensive lineman. You might be able to find an offensive lineman that can help you as a sixth man or maybe in 2025 and beyond but at 31 best available player could very well be a cornerback could be somebody like nate wiggins who came onto the scene very recently visited the 49ers 428 speed from clemson you got to find somebody who's going to help you immediately if you're the san francisco 49ers and it, and it might be somebody like a, a nate wiggins or somebody like a, a safety that can help you in a very very versatile fashion and can actually help you immediately if you're san francisco they've got they've got these red lights that keep on blinking in, in Huntington beach i just realized it was given it was given a cool lighting effect but anyway, that's that's the stage that's that's the ram's house stage here right on the beach right by all the beach volleyball courts we'll keep on walking uh, i guess they're gonna have their whole draft thing the, the lights were just on it said the seahawks were on the clock i don't think the seahawks have the first pick in in the draft tomorrow but they must be getting the systems tested out. I would be ready for optionality. The 49ers have striven to give themselves option power at every single step of their team building process. And I think this year has been no different. If I'm reading in between the lines correctly for the 49ers, uh, I, I see it like this. I see that they have not hosted really many first round prospects at all. Nate Wiggins is the, the corner out of Clemson is one of the uh, you know, him and Marshawn Neeland are, are two of the, the, the 23 prospects that we know about that the 49ers hosted on top 30 visits who have first round grades attached to them. There's a chance that the remaining six or seven prospects to fill out the 30 visit list are valuable first round guys, but there's also a chance that they're not. And it could be that the 49ers aren't planning to trade up from 31, that they're looking more at the middle rounds of the draft later than that first round. And to that, I just have to say that John Lynch came out and directly said the other day that he thinks that the lower rounds are gonna be lacking in this NFL draft. So if you take both of those clues, you look at the fact that they haven't hosted many first rounders with the asterisk that we don't know what the final six or seven visits are. You look at that and you look at the fact that John Lynch straight up said that he thinks the lower rounds might be lacking in talent. It's the middle rounds where the 49ers are gonna try to make some hay. The middle rounds, the 49ers have six picks right now from number 31 until the end of the fourth round. Six out of their 10 picks lie in that sweet spot. That also has been their sweet spot drafting thanks to their scouting department ever since 2017. So I have an article coming out about this in The Athletic tomorrow. San Francisco 
has shown some of the signs that the, that the middle rounds is that that's going to be where they try to take their biggest swings. They think that this draft is loaded with talent at those spots. And the, yeah, I mean, and the reason they think the lower rounds aren't filled with talent is because it's something like 83 players who they initially expected to declare for this NFL draft did not because of NIL, because college staying in college football turned out to be more lucrative than, than, than many, many people thought it was going to be. So the lower rounds are going to be a little bit more devoid of talent, but the middle rounds are loaded this year. That's where the 49ers have their picks. That looks like what they want to do as a football team. Now, things can obviously change. I talk about optionality. Something pops up, an offer pops up. It could be for Brandon Ayuk, something you can't turn down. Very unlikely because Ayuk is such a damn good football player and the 49ers are in win now mode. That has to be factored into everything the 49ers can do. But whatever might pop up, if it allows them to move up in the first round and they really love a player, obviously they can be moved off of their stance. They can be thrust into a position where they're, okay, fine, we're gonna move up in that first round and we're gonna take a swing at a player. But we assign probabilities to things. And the probability that the 49ers try to make their hay in that middle round range, I think is the highest in this draft. As far as the Brandon Ayuk situation goes, let's just chill. Let's see what happens. I mean, I, the amount of people who are like in technically in media who are deciding to say that they think a certain Brandon Ayuk thing will happen because they have a source. And then that source is, to me, it seems very obvious that source is just another media person is insane to me. Have we not learned at all what the danger of subscribing to an echo chamber is? I mean, so many people were sure that the 49ers were gonna draft Mac Jones because they were listening to other writers and acting like writers were sources instead of actually being sourced inside the building. I think it's fairly clear here that sources inside the 49ers building have no incentive and maybe even no ability to talk directly about what's gonna happen because even the 49ers aren't 100% sure. The 49ers have left themselves open to optionality and adaptability as any good business should. You're ready, you're on your toes. If you get an awesome offer, if you get a top first round, you know, top half of the first round offer, yeah, you're going and doing this because because you think you could get better as a football team even without Brandon Ayuk. And that would be a top half of the first round offer plus a receiver, something like a King's Ransom. But if you don't get that, which is in the highest of likelihoods, then you sit back and you're really happy that you've got this guy on your football team. I mean, it's what we've been saying all along. It's just that people are trying to take, <laughs> I mean, they're trying to take the hype of the moment, the emotion of the moment and say, yeah, I think something might be happening. Just calm down. Let's wait to see what does actually happen. Let's deal with reality and not hypotheticals once this draft starts. All right, so from Hermosa Beach, before I take off to the Bay Area tomorrow, there's the Rams house setup. Happy Draftmas Eve. Talk to you soon.